welcome to the Wandering Creatives Podcast. I'm your host, Allie Kutz, and joining me on today's episode is Janelle of Mel and Company. Thanks so much for joining me. Hey, Allie. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Uh, me too. I saw your stuff. I think I was just, I don't know, looking through Instagram or something, and somehow I've ended up on like polymer clay <laughs> Instagram, and you... So you have a a polymer clay jewelry business Mm -hmm. out of Raleigh. You're located in Raleigh, North Carolina, and your earrings are just adorable. Like, oh, thank you. (laughs) They're so freaking cute. And it's it's one of those times where I'm sad that I don't wear jewelry because I love. uh, Yeah, they're just so pretty and. They also look like, this is kind of weird, but they look like they have a nice texture, if that makes sense. Hey, I'm glad. <laughs> That's kind yeah. of what I'm going for. So, <laughs> But um, yeah, I kind of stumbled upon you on Instagram and fell in love with your jewelry and wanted to, to get you on the podcast to kind of talk a little bit about your business, first mm-hmm. off, that company, because you've recently just turned it into a business. Yep. It was started as a hobby and now yeah. you're at the top. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about the top, but I'm working my way somewhere. <laughs> you're getting there. And so, then you also have a full-time job, yes. a family, and a lot of other hobbies. So yes. I'm really interested in kind of talking about how you you manage it all because it's yeah. it, insane to me. I don't I don't know how how you do it. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know either, but I, I love to talk about it. So, <laughs> yeah. so I'll let you uh, go ahead and, and uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little okay. bit about, about who you are. Yeah. So I'm Janelle. My nickname is Nelly. Not everybody calls me that, but a lot of my friends call me that. Like a lot of my friends that I grew up with call me Nelly or Nell. And that's kind of where the name came from. Mm-hmm. It's actually a nickname that my great great grandmother had so on my mom's side her grandmother's name was Petronella and they called her Nelly and so then when my mom named me Janelle my grandmother was like oh like Nelly like my grandma Um, and it kind of stuck and so yeah I go by Janelle Nelly Nell whatever (laughs) so that's where that came from I'm originally from Rochester, New York. I lived there until I was 14. And then in high school, we moved to Miami, Florida, which was a mm-hmm. huge change. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of like from one extreme to the other. And then went to college at University of Florida, um, Go Gators, and then came up here for graduate school. <laughs> Met my husband and we, I went to UNC. I'm not a Tar Heel I'm a gator forever, but <laughs> you got that, that Florida gator blood. Right yes, in your exactly. <laughs> yeah, but my husband and then he lived in Raleigh. I got a job here and I've been here ever since for about eight and a half years. Mm-hmm. So yeah, have we have two little girls and two doggos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So up some kids. <laughs> exactly. I your grandmother, great, great grandmother's name, Petronella. Yeah. I mean, it's so we, cool. I love it. We just don't have names like that anymore. <laughs> I know it's beautiful. Yeah, I think that side of my family is like German and Prussian. So that I don't know if that's a yeah, nice. like very unique names. So yeah. And I like that it's it's been carried through and like nicknames mm-hmm. a little bit. So that's very yeah. really cool. I like that. When it comes to polymer clay, like I'm really interested because I'm sure it's been around forever, right? But I feel like in the last, I don't know, maybe two years, it really has become like a popular. Yeah, it's 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 like it popped up out of nowhere. I it's funny because like when I met markets and stuff, people like say, "Oh my gosh, I haven't seen this since I was a kid." Like I haven't, yeah. like, you know, I think a lot of like people worked with it, like as like a fun activity when you were little, I never did. I didn't really hear of it until again, like you said, like a couple of years ago, this 
a friend of a friend, she actually started making it. And I was like, wow, that's really beautiful. But I didn't get into it until about a year ago. So I think it was like, they have, you know, more kid friendly, like bright colors and stuff, brands and versions. But yeah, I didn't really, I didn't hear of it until very recently. Yeah, that's interesting that because I'm thinking back to like the 80s and the 90s and I'm like, was polymer clay a thing back Maybe <laughs> Maybe it was just called something else because I know we did, I did like clay. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just like Play-Doh. I mean, I played with a lot of Play-Doh. <laughs> exactly. <about> it. <laughs> yeah. Were you kind of like always an artistic or creative person, like as a child, or, or yeah. was there just something about polymer clay that you were like, oh man, like I've it. always been into crafts ever since I was little, like always drawing and painting, even through college, like in undergrad. I remember like I went through, you know, those like little wooden frames you can buy at Michael's. Mm -hmm. I went through a paint a million wooden frame phase with like, you know, acrylic paint. Like I'm always like doing something crafty. I remember like my mom was really good about like for birthday parties, we would do like crafts and stuff. And my Mm -hmm. mom would, you know, set up some kind of craft. Like I think one time we decorated like jewelry boxes or something. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I've always loved craft and my husband has, is always into, it has always been in, into crafts. Like, I think we bonded over that for sure. So oh, and your kids are going to have like, <laughs> I mean, it's gotta be so cool to grow up in that type of environment where you have like parents that are super crafty and like always doing like fun, <laughs> fun things. And then you as a child kind of get to like experience that and probably, you know, try some of those crafts as well and, and yeah you know, that's super cool. yeah that's gonna be awesome so, so you said a, a friend introduced you to polymer clay mm-hmm. and that's how you kind of got started in in using it and you, you primarily make earrings right yes is yeah is there a reason that that like cl- polymer clay and then also like earrings kind of caught your attention and, and you wanted to dive into I that think- I think I've just always been an earring person and I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I feel like earrings are something that you can either dress up or dress down and wear them with anything, like depending on the style, like you can have a really simple stud. Like if you're not super into like statement earrings, like something really small or you can go really big. And the cool thing about polymer clay is that it's really lightweight. And so if you have really sensitive ears Um, or you've worn earrings for a really long time, polymer clay, like even if you want like something big, you can probably wear it because it's so light. And I like necklaces and stuff too, but I feel like earrings are a lot easier to make, (laughs) honestly. (laughs) And there's less pieces once you put them together. Um, So I can make a lot more at a time. So yeah, I think that's kind of why I gravitate towards earrings is because you can kind of have something for all occasions. I, I literally know nothing about polymer clay, just like the way it looks. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it, do you have to like fire it or do you just let it sit out and like dry and then like coat it with something or like what's You the, bake it in the oven. This? Oh, It's really? super easy. With, yeah. Yep. And depending on the brand, like it's really easy to work with. It's like a very soft clay and it's not real clay. It's made out of, it's basically like a plastic clay, but it's really easy to work with. And the cool thing is you can get like pretty much any color you want. And again, depending on the brand, like the colors can be super vibrant, which I also really like. And you put it in the oven for like 30 minutes and then you're good to go. Oh, it's really durable too. <laughs> like I had no idea. Yeah. I thought you had to like let them sit. And, cause I'm, I guess, cause I'm getting into resin and I guess mm-hmm, you can yeah. get, like UV resin stuff, but you know, you have to just let it sit and cure. Yep. And then like, when you were first starting, how often did you like burn your earrings? <laughs> I actually haven't. So you, you, I just like followed the instructions on the, the little packet and you, you bake them at a really low temperature, like 230 degrees. And it says 30 minutes. I do it for 25 I don't know why. Just to be safe. <laughs> don't ask where that came from. Yeah. And so I, yeah, I, I, I've actually crossed my fingers, never burned anything, but I've heard of that happening. So 
hopefully that <laughs> never happen. probably do the opposite it would say like cook you know bake for 30 and I'd be like I'm gonna do 35 just to be sure yeah. and then probably <laughs> just like burn the shit out of everything yeah <laughs> oh my gosh so the cool thing about Nell and Co Nell and Company um mm-hmm. is it's it's really new like you just started it at the beginning of 20 2021 one yeah so it's yeah. like a year old and yep you were doing polymer clay as a hobby and then mm-hmm. you were like I'm gonna turn this into a business talk, yeah. talk, talk me through that a little bit like what was the sure. catalyst to to making that decision so yeah I started it as a hobby just like something fun to do I have like a bunch of other crafty hobbies and people have had people have always said like, oh, Janelle, you should start an Etsy. You should sell this online. And I'm like thinking about like the scarf or something that I embroidered. And I'm like, do you know how long this takes to make? <laughs> like, Let's do a limited I don't, have, edition. <laughs> I don't have time to make like 50 scarves or paint all this stuff or, you know, embroider wall hangings so no and then yeah just I just bought some clay for fun and was making some earrings and then the cool thing about clay about polymer clay is you can make a lot more at once so then all of a sudden I had all these earrings Mm -hmm. and I'm like I can't wear all of these so I gave them to my friends and they were like oh these are really cool Janelle are you gonna sell them and I'm like I don't know I didn't really think of (laughs) And then I re- I was like, had all this inventory and had it just like the voice in my head that has always been like, I wish I could sell stuff on Etsy was like, mm-hmm. hey, <laughs> I know you don't have enough time, but you should sell <laughs> these on Etsy. And I was really cautious at first because I didn't want to like get in over my head. I just started selling things over Instagram and Facebook, mostly, I mean, basically exclusively to like my family and friends. And then I was, I kind of looked into it more into Etsy and saw kind of how, the, uh, how that would work. And I asked other people that I know that have sold things on Etsy and then just kind of took that leap and, mm-hmm. and did it. <laughs> nice. My husband has like a degree in business something or other so he was a big help <laughs> oh my god I'm so jealous that yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing <laughs> that is extremely useful did you experience any like struggles with making that transition like did you start feeling like you had more pressure I guess to to create like oh I have a business now which means I have to do like I have to make earrings yeah it well, it was very overwhelming at first because, again, I really had no idea what I was doing. And I, and, but on the other hand, I went into it like I enjoy making earrings and I enjoy the way that it makes people feel when they look at, like, when they get a pair of earrings or like seeing people, the smile on people's faces and stuff. And so, I kind of told myself, like, if that joy ever goes away, then I'm going to stop doing it. I don't, I didn't ever want it to become something I felt like I had to do, you know, Mm -hmm. as opposed to like wanting to do it. And I didn't really go into it, like wanting it to become my life, if that makes sense. Absolutely. I wanted it to be something that, yeah, brought me joy instead of like, oh, I have to fulfill this order. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Or like, and I didn't want to go into it and then like find out that I'm horrible at it, (laughs) which I think a lot of (laughs) makers have. I mean, I don't know if other people have that worry where, so I didn't want to have this idea in my mind, like, oh, I want this to be this big thing. And then I like suck at it and I like don't sell anything. And then I'm super disappointed. Absolutely. (laughs) I think we all experience that. Yeah. I tried to go in with a level head and I mean, I'm still really enjoying it. So I'm going to keep on going. I think that's a great way to kind of approach it with like less pressure on yourself to, yeah. to you know, like this has to be successful and I have to like, this has to be a thing. And, and right. 
Yeah. Because um, I imagine that kills the kills the joy probably fairly quickly, I would think. Mm-hmm. And that was something else that was really interesting, I guess. So when we talked prior to recording, because I, I don't know if I've had anyone say this before or express this, I guess, but you also have a full-time job. Mm-hmm. And usually when I'm talking to creatives, right, they're like hustling so that they can quit their full-time job and just go mm-hmm. full-time creative. And something you said is that you really love your job yes. and you like that it gives you, you know, like a little bit of structure and mm-hmm. like, you're not, you're not hustling to quit your nine to five. Like you, you want to stay in it and then also enjoy your business um, on the side. And I, I, I think that's amazing because <laughs> again, like a lot of people I talk to, they're like, yeah, I quit my 95 so I can do this full time. And you're, you're kind of like the opposite. And I find that really interesting. And like, I guess I'm just curious to hear a little bit more about that. Like, do you ever struggle with finding that balance of, of, I mean, gosh, you work full time, you've got your creative business and then a family on top of all of that. Like what, how do you, how do you manage all of that? Um, I don't sleep. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm <a laughs> my mom liar. asks me that all the time. time. Now, like, yeah, she's, my mom is always like, no, when do you sleep? And I'm like, I don't know, at the very end of the day. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm a geologist. I went, I have two degrees in geology. Yeah. And so I love rocks. (laughs) That is my passion. What I've always been into science. So aside from the creative side of me, I'm also a very scientific, methodical, logic person. I'm like definitely type A, always have been huge nerd and discovered geology in undergrad. And I was like, I can do this as a career. Let's go. I went to graduate school and I work for an environmental consulting company. Well, I work for an environmental group in a, in like an engineering consulting company. I don't really get to look at rocks anymore, but I, I actually mostly do like solid waste stuff. So like landfills, uh, yeah. <laughs> like remediation <laughs> and um, groundwater and surface water and soil and all the fun stuff, making the earth happy as my four-year-old would say. <laughs> Yes. So, and I really like it. It's, you know, that there is the mundane part of like, you know, having the nine to five, five, but I'm very lucky in that I have, my team is really small. We all work really well together. It's the family work-life balance is outstanding and I like it. Yeah. I think it's super interesting what I do. I mean, I don't see myself not wanting to do that. And I like the career path that I'm on. Um, Like I'm kind of getting into more project management stuff with, which is, which I love, like I love working with people and managing a team and seeing projects from start to finish. And yeah, the structure is huge for me. I'm such a routine person. A lot of people I, Oh, Janelle, like you should do this full time. Like you should quit your job and just make earrings all the time. And I'm like, that's kind of like pressure. Like, I don't Mm -hmm. want to, (laughs) like, am I supposed to do that? Like, you know what I mean? And it's like one of those things where it's like, there's no rule book for what you're supposed to do in your life. And so, and plus like my answer is like, I don't, that for me, that's just not realistic. I would be really sad leaving my job. There's no, and there's always the worry that like, you know, making earrings is, would not pan out as well as, yeah my job does. And as long as I can keep a balance between work and, you know, my side business, then that's kind of how I'm going to keep going. And actually like my, (laughs) my boss is actually, he like buys earrings for his kids all the time, which is so cute. (laughs) So I, yeah, I have like this nice little balance between my nine to five, I guess, and my not nine to five. Yeah. And I, I kind of want to get the message out there that nine to five doesn't have to be, you know, like this horrible thing. Mm-hmm. Um, if you love what you do, then that makes it worth it, I guess, you know? Yeah, so. I love that. I, okay. 
I could have a whole conversation with you about geology. Yes. <laughs> and again, as a former archaeologist and then like an environmental compliance person for mm-hmm. years, I'm like, oh my God, we could have some conversations, especially about landfills. <laughs> there, I mean, <laughs> a lot of people are probably like, oh my gosh, ew, but they're so fascinating. <laughs> I, there, it is the entire system and structure of a landfill is wild. It's bananas. Um, yeah. You might have to have conversations offline. Uh, we can yes. totally nerd out um, <laughs> about rocks. <laughs> um, but I, I like that you, what you said about, I think it goes back to kind of what we were saying in regards to like the pressure, right? You, you can still enjoy your side hustle or your yeah. jewelry making because you don't have that pressure of, I have to make this work. Like this is, right. this is it. <laughs> Yeah, that's so scary to me. And I like give all the props to the people that do that because that's so impressive. It's like such a huge, that's, yeah, that's so impressive. You also have like a full-time job that like helps support your Mm -hmm. like hobby addictions, which is a huge. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I love that. But I think that's like, I, I do think that's a, it's a good thing to say because I, do feel like, and you kind of touched on this, like, I do feel like when you start really focusing on taking something from a hobby to a business, or even just starting your own business in whatever it may be, as like a side hustle or whatever, you do get a lot of like outside pressure of people Mm -hmm. asking like, oh, well, this is good. Like, is this going to be your full-time thing? Are you quitting your job? Like, how are you doing both? And like all of that, I feel like can kind of like, right. not, I don't want to say like hinder progress or like tank experience, but there's definitely like a weird pressure to, to do that, to quit mm-hmm. your nine to five and go full in. Right. So yeah. I, I, I enjoy, like, you can do both. Like you said, yeah. I think that probably for some people will help keep that passion and enjoyment alive for sure. Yeah. And actually I kind of want to talk about like, like setting boundaries is also Mm. really, really important in kind of like not going insane. People do ask like, how do you balance all of that? And like setting boundaries and it has, is so important, which I mean, I really didn't even, I think, well, the pandemic has helped a lot with that. Mm -hmm. Not that like, you know, the pandemic has been horrible, but I think like I've learned that if you, and this is like super cheesy, but I say it all the time, (laughs) but like, if you want to fill up like other people's cups, you have to fill up your own first. Yeah. That's so important. I've definitely learned that over the pandemic, especially like with my kids. Like if I want to have the energy to like play hide and seek 50 million times, (laughs) I need to have like yeah filled up my own cup or otherwise I'm probably going to be really grumpy because I don't want to play hide and seek with a Mm -hmm. (laughs) four-year-old because they're not very good at hide and seek so yeah finding the balance and like learning when to say no and like what's too much because I could you know apply to like every single market every single weekend but like for me that's not realistic because then I'm going to be preparing for markets every single week before the weekend and Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to do other things that I like to do like play with my kids or work out or hang, you know, go on a date with my husband. So setting boundaries is a really, really key thing to kind of, you know, keeping yourself sane. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah. How did you, cause I, I definitely struggle with setting boundaries, especially with like clients. Oh yeah. Stuff. It's hard. Like it's, I still struggle. Oh my gosh. It's so hard for me to say, oh, well, you know, I can't do it this day because I've already got like six things. And so I overwork yeah. myself constantly. How did you start to implement that? Like, was it just like, did you have a trick to it or was it just something you developed over time? You were like, you know um, what, this is important to me. No, <laughs> I, I don't, that's a really good question. Therapy is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, So shout out to my therapist for helping me figure out how to set boundaries. (laughs) So yeah, no, but really, I think it's just like taking things in small steps. Mm -hmm. So, you know, say like you feel like you're overbooked for a day. 
like stepping back and thinking about it, like, gosh, I don't want to do that again. And I think like just a good example would be like you and I have rebooked this session a few times and I never mm-hmm. felt like, oh my gosh, Ali, how annoying. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I, the first time I had to do it and I was like, oh my gosh, she's going to think I'm like flaking or something. <laughs> But I'm sure you never thought that because I never thought that yeah. about you. But at the end of the day, like I was like, I'm so glad that I did that because I would have been so stressed out if I had to do it that first day that we scheduled it. And it really mm-hmm. just didn't work. And so once you do it like a couple of times, you realize like all of that anxiety is misplaced mm-hmm. and probably is based on just your own. Like it's not real. You know, it doesn't mean that the feeling is not valid. Cause it totally is. But I think just practice, like, don't, you don't have to like set a huge boundary, like right off the bat, like just like little things or even like planning is really helpful too. Like mm. with, but with, you know, like giving yourself grace, like I'm going to make earrings like one night this week. And if that doesn't happen, that's okay. But also like, I'm going to spend time with my husband X amount of times a week if that doesn't yeah. happen, that's okay. But like having plan, like kind of, I'm a huge planner. Me and too. so, <laughs> yeah, just, and that is a way of setting boundaries is like by planning something. Yeah. Taking and taking baby steps and giving yourself grace and realizing it's okay to mess up and mm-hmm. not be perfect. And yeah. Take, take time for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Taking time for yourself is so important. Yeah. I think personally for me when like there's a lot of guilt associated with stuff like that like yes and like oh am I being selfish or am you know like a lot of that Mm -hmm. goes on but like you said it's one of those things where I don't know I kind of allow myself to like feel it and then I'm like okay it's fine (laughs) yeah and and that you know (laughs) you like power through and and sometimes you have to do that and that's fine too but I've found especially over the last couple of years that like setting boundaries with people, the people that understand are the ones that I want around. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and the, the ones that don't, don't understand, I'm like, <laughs> Hey, bye. <laughs> no time for that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my so. gosh. Um, what would you say have been some of the most rewarding things about starting your own business? I guess like doing the markets So because I just started and I've only done like four markets and I did them in the fall and that was like the most rewarding experience because you actually get to see people face to face. Otherwise I sell things on Etsy and I just put them in the mail. You know, people will review and be like, yeah, that was great. But like seeing somebody's actual reaction when they come up to your booth is so incredibly overwhelming in the best way because I'm like, oh my gosh, people actually like the things that I'm creating, like that is yeah. the biggest compliment ever <laughs> and makes you, it's very selfish. Like, I'm like, wow, I feel really good about myself. Yeah, no, I but, agree. And everyone is so nice. Even like the other, the other vendors, every, it's such a supportive atmosphere. I feel like, like we're all rooting for each other. Mm-hmm. Like actually at my first market, the vendor next to me was also a jewelry person. And they were my first customer. So I'm like, oh, no jewelry competition. But yeah. <laughs> and I, that was just like my worry. Like they were thinking that and they weren't like, it was very like, let's lift each other up. And cause we're all just in this hustle together, you know? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, so that, yeah, that's the most rewarding thing is like people just appreciating they like you, you putting, I put like a lot of time and love into what I do and uh, see people find joy from that is planet (laughs) yeah it's it's that's what I was I was saying to someone else it's like you know we're creating these things and there's like a little piece of us and everything that we make oh my gosh yes and then yeah yeah, it's it's hard to explain the feeling when yeah when someone buys something or even if someone just stops in and like compliments something that you're made Mm -hmm. like oh yes (laughs) like it's such a great feeling it's amazing yep that's so true because yeah go ahead oh I was just gonna say and and like you said the the maker community is just insane it's I think it's one of the best groups of people 
that I have had the pleasure of like being in, I guess, and mm-hmm. like being a part of a community. It's just like you said, super supportive, and everyone is yeah in the in the hustle together. So it's it's awesome to get to meet other makers for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's it's incredible. It's very cool. I wanted to go back to the polymer clay for a moment. I'm gonna throw some yeah. questions at you. Uh, okay. <laughs> What are, if you had to give like a tip or two to someone who is interested in getting into polymer clay, but like doesn't mm-hmm. know like where to start, yeah. what, uh, what would you tell them? Oh, that's a good question. Cause I definitely was there last year. I guess my, I guess the first thing that I would do is just buy, just buy it, like buy some clay. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm like what brand you'll it's you'll figure out like what works best for you because I've talked to like a bunch of different people that work with polymer clay polymer clay and everybody has their favorite brand Mm -hmm. they're I mean for the most part they're all pretty good all of the clays that are out there if you want to get started honestly just using Nichols brand to kind of like get a feel for it just go get like the starter pack that has you know I don't know 20 colors in it or something Mm -hmm see if it's something that you'd like to do, even if just like as a hobby, I think that that's probably the best tip because I mean, I probably, and I, I probably spent like a week just trying to figure out what brand to go with first, mm. which just like, I wasted so much time. <laughs> I could have yeah. just like went out and got it. Just doing um, research. That's a type yeah, and I was going to say, type A, we got to do our research. <laughs> and <I'm> like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And another resource has been Pinterest and Mm -hmm. TikTok actually has a lot of really cool like how-to videos. Mm -hmm. I'm not super like TikTok savvy. I don't know. That's (laughs) Uh, I don't know how to do it. But the the, creator side of TikTok or like small business side of TikTok is freaking amazing. Like yes it's insane what you can find on there. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So yeah I think that that those would be my tips yeah just do it so another uh thing I wanted to ask was what advice do you have for people who want to take like a hobby to a business I think learning about pricing is really important Mm -hmm. and deciding which platform you on is also really important there are a lot of different platforms out there and they're all very different and depending on what depending on what you do, some of them will be right for you and some of them will not be right for you. And there are a lot of good resources out there. Like I think your first episode was actually a really helpful episode in like kind of learning how to take your your business to the next level. Like Studio Sisters, they have an Etsy I've been since I listened to your first episode I've been obsessed (laughs) they like they sell stickers so like depending on what you do Etsy might work for you or you might want to get your site if you have you know it just it totally depends so like do your research Mm -hmm. also and pricing is really important like you don't want to and I think studio sisters emphasize this a lot is you don't want to sell yourself short like people if you make and like put your heart and soul into it like people will pay for it like you are good enough basically you know what I mean like Mm -hmm. yeah don't ever sell yourself short so Um, because if if you if you don't price your things high enough people are going to think like oh well maybe that's not like that great of a product yeah that's exactly what uh, first off yes amazing advice cannot I guess like studio sisters yes like they I'll follow have, them <laughs> they have an insane amount of knowledge especially when it comes to Etsy and they have their yeah. own podcast mm-hmm. as well as just like a resource library so definitely check them out and on the pricing thing I really I cannot remember where I heard this but I it was literally this week someone was talking about how oftentimes when you price something too low it comes off as it can come off as as your product not being good, like you said. Yeah. And yeah. your customer's gonna be like, oh, why is this only five dollars? Like, is it right. poor quality or 
you know, what. So I think that is so important and is definitely something that a lot of creatives struggle with. Yeah. Knowing, I guess, our our worth and our value. (laughs) Yeah. I think that's so important because like when people, for Etsy, for example, when someone goes on Etsy, those are handmade things. Like Mm -hmm. you, you know, some things, yeah, you could probably like go just uh, if you like for like a pair of earrings, for example, I could go on Amazon and get, you know, a $2 pair of black studs. But Mm -hmm. like, if you go on Etsy, you know, like the thing that you're buying comes from a place of like love and creativity and you're supporting somebody. I would, I'll pay a higher price for that. Like it probably better quality too, to, you know, give yourself value. <laughs> uh, pricing is such, yeah, pricing is such. It's scary. <laughs> it is. That was, it, it was really challenging. So. Go through the, like we were saying earlier, like the doubt, you know, like if I charge too much for this, are right. people not going to buy it? Or if I charge too little, <laughs> are people not going to buy it? So you have to be like, yeah, figure out where that like happy price yeah. range is. And there's a, there are a ton of calculators online too, if you need help figuring out where to like a starting point and also like I think the studio sisters recommended like search your product and mm-hmm. see what other people are charging that's also yeah. a really good place to start especially if you're on Etsy because yeah you exactly have an idea yeah great advice great advice I guess I mean do you have any other kind of like final words on how to like stay organized or stay motivated when it comes to creativity and, and the hustle? Um, I think for like staying motivated, do what makes you happy. Mm-hmm. So like back to one of your first questions, like why do you make earrings? It's like, cause I love, that's what I like to do. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to make something that I'm not into or I don't like, then my motivation is going to be very low. I mean, Mm -hmm. at the same time, like, you know, if I have very weird taste and that's, (laughs) (laughs) I have to like think about my, you know, like who I'm selling to at at the same time, but yeah, like make, make something that makes you happy too at the same time, because if it doesn't, then it's going to show. Very true. Very true. Is there, do you have anything coming up, any events or, workshops, classes, anything you'd like to um, share with our listeners? So I don't know about market yet this spring. I've applied to a bunch. So that's a stay tuned thing. You can, I post most thing, pretty much everything on Instagram and then on Facebook as well. I have a few things that I've been working on. I've been I made, I actually made my first TikTok the other day. I was very proud of myself. (laughs) I'm trying to start doing a little bit more videos because I mean, I love videos like people making stuff. I'll sit there and watch those all day. So I'm like, well, maybe I could do that. So stay tuned for some more videos. And one thing I'm trying to work on right now is I've been making some gnome earrings, which are super adorable. Shout out to one of my best customers, Jean, she wanted me to make gnome earrings for her for Christmas. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So I'm going to start like making those oh as well and selling them. So stay tuned. Ooh, I cannot wait to see them. I'm sure they're going to be freaking cute. So you mentioned Instagram and Facebook. What are your it's handles? At Nell and Company. Nell so N E L L and Company on Instagram and Facebook and Etsy. Awesome. And I will, of course, um, include all of uh, Janelle's information in the episode description. So you will be able to find her uh, accounts and her Etsy uh, super fast and super easily. And I mean, thanks so much for being on. Like, it has been <laughs> thank you. wonderful chatting with you. And I can't thank you enough for kind of, for kind of letting us in on your your creative journey and for sharing your knowledge with us today. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been a crazy year, but in like the best way. So yeah, um, 2022, man. Like just <laughs> <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Love it. And so Janelle, I thank you again so much. And I want to thank 
um, listeners for tuning in to today's episode. If you have questions, comments, thoughts, whatever, for me or for any of my guests, including Janelle, you can text or call me at 252-419-6004, and I will include those questions um, and answers on a future episode of the podcast. You can also follow us on Instagram. Be sure to like, rate, and review the podcast. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Wandering Creatives Podcast, a CEI media production. Please like, rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast as it helps us greatly. You can follow us on Instagram at Wandering Creatives Pod and on Facebook at Wandering Creatives Podcast. If you would like to support the podcast, you can become a Patreon for just $5 a month. The link is in the episode description.